here so uh, I'm putting together this lesson on um, using the entire fretboard and, and really being able to navigate your way around the fretboard uh, when you play guitar solos uh, like I know when I first started uh, I would often get kind of stuck in one particular shape that I liked or you know one uh, blues box or something you get stuck in that box then um, so the idea is to know your way all up and down the fretboard so that uh, you know you can spice things up in your solos and, and you know change, uh, start playing in, the, in, in a different register, you know, once the listener gets used to the one, then you kind of switch it up. Um, so that little thing I just played in the beginning there, I tried to, um, well, I, did, I used the entire, you know, um, range of the guitar from the lowest note to the highest note, um, used them all. Um, you know, just to prove a point, I don't know if that necessarily sounded uh, terribly musical or, or, or good. But uh, just to, to show you, uh, you know, the idea of moving around the neck. But so really, the focus of this lesson though is uh, is how to think about it. Uh, I'm not going to teach you how to play that particular thing. Instead, I'm going to teach you how to how to think about the fretboard in such a way that uh, that you can get around if uh, that's something that uh, you're trying to work on. So uh, I I wrote down a few list of steps here, so I don't forget them. So I'll read them all off first, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to go through it with an example using A major. And that thing I played in the beginning, I, I stayed within an A major scale the entire time. So all those notes flying around were, you know, they were really just the seven tones of the eight major, A major scale. Um, so let's see here. So the eight steps I came up with is one, uh, you want to know the pattern of intervals for the scale you're working with. Um, so for example, uh, the A major scale, or actually any major scale, the pattern goes whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And what I mean by that is, uh, if I start on this A here, um, if I go up a whole step, so that's two frets, and then from there I go up two frets again, and then half, so one fret, now whole again, Whole again, uh, whole again, and then a half at the end. So that will work uh, for any major scale. You just need to um, you need to know that that um, um, those intervals. So once again, that's whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, um, and that'll that's for any major scale. Whatever note you start on. That'll, you know, if you start it with a C and follow that pattern of a C major scale. Um, and remember, a half step is one fret, a whole step is two frets. So know that, and then um, start practicing those intervals on a single string. And uh, you can actually have a lot of fun with this. So, like, for example, um, I'll do it in E this time. You can... Uh so right there, I was just kind of messing around with doing it uh, legato, you know? Um, so things like that, and you, you can you can go all around the the uh, all up and down the neck, any pattern, maybe you pick it. Um, so I would recommend that that's a good thing for for getting to be able to move up and down the neck is just to be able to play a note on on a single uh, excuse me play a scale on a single string. Uh, that's really good practice for for getting along, and uh, actually a couple times within that introductory thing, that thing I played in the intro, um, I connected two different shapes by just going up a scale on on a single string, and um, 
yeah, you, you can actually do some, some neat stuff with that. Um, so don't underestimate how useful um, doing the scale on a single string can be. Uh, let's, let's see here. The third thing I said, or I have on my list here, is uh, once the tonality of the scale you're working with is firmly ingrained in your head, start working out three note per string patterns in various places up and down the neck. Okay, so once you have it in your head that, that you know, for example, what a major scale sounds like, it's, it's you know, do, re, mi, you know. Once you have that sound in your head, then uh, start working out three note per string patterns. And uh, I, try, I definitely tried to do some of these in the intro thing, um, because they're a great way to get around the neck. So like, for example, um, we have an A major scale here. So this is starting on the fifth fret of the low E string, and then just play the first three notes of the scale there. And I'm not going to tell you what the notes are, right? Because this is after you've ingrained it in your mind that, that you know what the, an A major scale sounds like. So three notes on the low E string, three notes on the uh, A string, and then um, two notes on the um, D string. But if the scale were to keep going, you, have, you still have a third note here. So once again, doing three notes per string, we have... So I, I've, I've started, I, I've went all the way up to the second note of the next octave, right? But what's cool is um, you can then keep going with it. So when we have it ingrained in our head what an A major scale sounds like. So now we just need to keep finding the three note per string pattern. So. You see that I've actually started to work my way up the neck just by following three note per string patterns uh, for an A major scale. So, so far no, no position change, but then I have to shift. So. Oops, I missed it. So right there, it's that transition between the G string and the B string. So that's, uh, let's see here, 6th fret on the G string. 6, 7, 9, 7, 9, 10. There we go. And what, what you've incorporated there is, is a tiny position shift of just one fret. But nonetheless, you're working your way up the neck this way. And you can do that. Now, another thing you can do is you have these three note per string patterns, right? But I could, I could have started here. So you see that what I did is, is uh, I took the second note of uh, this um, three string pattern, I took the second note here and made it the, the first note of the next pattern. So. Like that. So that's another trick, is you have these three note per, per string patterns but you can stack them on top of each other. And it's up to you to, to, to just figure out where all these three note per string patterns are on the neck. Um, and again, you know, let your ear be the judge. Maybe even um, if you want to do it with a backing track, just uh, you know, maybe record yourself just a simple you know, just like an A major chord and then And then um, just keep finding these three note per string patterns. And you know, you find them in each position, moving up the neck. And you'll find that, that certain ones um, are really convenient like as a place to switch positions. Um, so that's another trick, is, is find these three note per string patterns. They can get you far. Oh, OK, so once you find these uh, uh, three note per string patterns, just like a little technique thing is um, the three note per strings can be tricky to play, 
particularly if you're if you've played a lot of blues and you're used to holding the guitar like this, like notice where my thumb is. <laughs> Um, for blues, like a lot of times it's more convenient to have your thumb up here for bluesy type licks, but for three note per string patterns, you won't be able to reach like that. So your thumb really needs to come back behind the, well, that doesn't, you can't really see. My thumb needs to be back here. So like my thumb is like about this point on the neck, but behind it. Um, um, so that's, uh, your thumb placement is actually really important for these three note per string patterns. Another trick is um, practice them with all hammer-ons. So like legato playing, but but don't, you know, try to use as few pull-offs as you can. And what this does is it really builds that muscle memory for your for your brain of where, the, you know, what where these shapes are. Um, so just do them with all hammer-ons. That wasn't perfect, but uh, you get the idea. Is, is and if if you keep repeating these things enough, they'll they'll really uh, get ingrained in your head. And then also, if you can do them with all hammer-ons, then picking them is no problem. Um, you you probably uh, you know assuming that you've you've spent a decent amount of time developing your alternate picking technique, uh, you'll probably find that uh, picking them comes quite naturally if you can play them comfortably uh, using just hammer-ons. So. Um, I actually got that tip from uh, watching a Guthrie Govan video a while a while ago, where he was saying that a lot of times people will complain that they need to work on their alternate picking because it doesn't sound clean, but he said more times than not the culprit is your fretting hand, and that's what's not you're not fretting it cleanly. It's that you're you're picking it fine. It's the fretting that's the problem. Um, so when I heard that, it, that's when I, I really started to think, well, maybe I should just try and do all legato and see um, how that goes. Um, so, uh, so that's another trick. All right. So at this point we are, uh, yeah. And, and like I said, really pay attention to that thumb placement. Uh, the other thing too, is that if you have the habit, and again, this is, this is a blues player thing. And I started out playing blues before I got into the shreddy stuff. So I, I, I picked up some, some habits that kind of slowed me down from time to time. One is if you're really clamping down on the neck, particularly with your thumb, it, it's hard to move around. So you really want to like be able to, to um, move easily. And one thing that, that helps with this again is, is doing that all, all the all the all hammer-ons. Um, that really helps helps build this, particularly the, the index finger. Because if you need that index finger to to uh, to hit the string with enough energy to, to make it vibrate, that means you can't be clamping it, right? Whereas, like when you play blues shapes, sometimes you start using it like the human capo, and you just kind of dig it in. There. You know, uh, it it, uh, it can slow you down if if if, if you don't um, if you can't uh, move move around quickly. And so, you know, pay attention to your thumb placement in the back and also uh, that, that your index finger isn't becoming a human capo. Um, so that's another point for, for moving around on the neck. Uh, let's see. Uh, as I mentioned, um, you know, these patterns that you're moving around the neck finding, you know, make sure you really note where they overlap with each other. Um, because, uh, you know, that, uh, that helps you connect them together and, 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 and you can come up with runs that sound like, you know, it's one fluid motion going from one shape to the next, you know, it doesn't have this like rough transition thing. And again, just, just pay attention to where the shapes line up and, and sometimes you'll find that you can do these little half step position shifts that, um, that uh, can, you know, link the two shapes quite nicely. Uh, for example, if you do like, say, just for an example, like the E major scale. <laughs> Bass uh, with the with the root note on the A string seventh fret. 
use my E. Um, and I'm, I'm just playing an A major shape, that same shape I did before, uh, but in E. But this shape connects really nicely with, um, there's another major scale shape that I like to play uh, starting on the G string. So this is the G string, G string, ninth fret. So it goes 9, 11, 9, 10, 12, 9, 11, 12. That's that's a that's a shape that I that I find very comfortable to play in uh, major scale shapes, but it connects really well with this shape. Because this note here, the first note of this of the higher shape, that's the first note there. It's the last note of this shape, right? So. Um, but that's only two notes for that string, so you just add the third here. And then a one, uh, a one, uh, one step position shift. Whoops. So. So, and again, do it with all hand rolls. Oh, I need to pull off. Um, so, uh, you know, that's an example of, of t connecting two different uh, major scale shapes that uh, connect really nicely. Uh, let's see. So, uh, in you know, once, once you start getting the hang of it, um, and you have a few of these different shapes that, that you like to use. And I, rec I recommend just pick one key signature, like say A major, and just really uh, work with it over and over. Find as many shapes as you can up and down the neck. And, um, you know, and, and then start connecting them all using a combination of using these overlapping shapes, particularly three note per string ones, really help you move around. As well as, uh, you know, just using a few uh, single note patterns um, or sorry, single string patterns uh, where, you, where you play the scale on the same string. Uh, combine these two techniques uh, to move around. And actually, you know, I'm gonna add one more. Uh, I don't have it written down, but this is a, another really good one is know the chord shapes, right? So I know down, so let's say for A major, um, you know, here, here's just our open A, you know, just regular open A. Pardon. Uh, and then on the fifth fret, you can do an A like this with a bar chord, and, and this can be helpful, you know, because if you know that chord's there, you know, you know that's so you can throw an arpeggio in there. right? Because you know that shape is there, and then now uh, you've got another one up here. This is the same shape as you know how you, you play an open C chord. It's that same shape, but it's up here. So I'm not using any open strings, but then I'm using my index finger down here, is uh, like my human cable, right? So I know that shape there. And I can use that. In fact, in that intro thing, I was using this shape. This uh, I was doing something like a. There was something in there kind of like that, and I, I was just thinking about the chord shape that's there. Uh, let's see here, there's another one up here. Let's see, there any, oh, and then at, at the end I used this one. The, the same bar chord down here, there's it all the way up here. Yeah, I used it uh, as an arpeggio. But nonetheless, I had to know that that shape was up there so that I could use it. Um, so know where all the chord shapes are as well. Um, and the chord shapes are, are really helpful, not just for playing, you know, the, 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 uh, these fancy arpeggios, but also if, if you are someone who wants to try and start using chromatic tones, um, 
the, the knowing that the chord shapes really helps because the, the best way to use chromatics is to just think about chord tones and non chord tones I think that's the easiest way to get into chromatics and then just rhythmically uh, you can incorporate them uh, because as long as you get things to resolve on a chord tone uh, you know on the, on the downbeat or you know wherever rhythmically it, 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 it feels like it should resolve uh, then you can kind of throw the chromatic stuff in between so knowing where the chords the chord shapes are is really helpful for using chromatics as well uh, and the final thing is just repetition you need to um, do this over and over again if you really want to get good at it just like anything else with guitar uh, so there's there's no shortcuts but uh, hopefully uh, these steps were helpful um, I'll put the, the steps that I gave in the comments um, so that you uh, don't have to try and write them down or anything. Alright, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, feel free to post questions. Alright, good luck!